She is the founder of Gender Dynamics International, partnered to Corporate Heart Limited, United Kingdom. She is an international speaker, ambassador of magical conversations, a gender dynamics expert, and an educator. She engages audience in a journey of self-discovery based on the principle of value creation and emerging techniques that help navigate the mind field of relationships. She is an expert in gender dynamics blueprint for the 21st century happiness and love sexes. Ladies and gentlemen, Pauline Crawford Holmes. Thank you, Frederick, for inviting me here today, today, tonight, this afternoon, whatever it is where you are. Um, I love the feeling that I've been beamed in to your planet because I can see that space behind you. It's very, very surreal. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Pauline. Thanks a lot. Pauline, I need to tell you something. And, 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 and I'm proud to say this because most of the people, most of the guests who come uh, in my show, they either are, are contacted directly by me. I look for them and I see who are those achievers. But in your case, it's a different thing. Somebody else recommended you. And that's how I came to know about you. I went to your blog. I went to your website and I started researching who you are. How influential are you and how important it is to be an influential person? And do you believe that you are an influential person? Uh, yes, yes, and yes. I do believe I'm an influential person. But I think everybody can be. And I think it's really important to be. So I love conversations. So I'm known as the ambassador of magical conversations. Mm -hmm. And anytime I say to people, that's great. But one of the, the the ways to influence is to embrace people into the conversation. So conversation is not one way. And I think the reason that I, I find people are attracted to me in the conversation is because I always bring them in. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are shy of embracing a total uh, strange situation or a stranger. And, and therefore, I also educate people in how to do it. Mm -hmm. But for me, I've always been a, a chatterer. Mm -hmm. So... The fact that I can influence people and make them feel good about themselves, that's, that's just wonderful. Wow. Wonderful. Excellent. You are a Gender Dynamic International founder. What, what is this all about? For me, well, I, I have no clue about it. Just educate me what is Gender Dynamics. And you, are, you go into blueprints and so forth because I went through your website. Yeah. So tell me about what is it and how can that help my audience? Well, the, there is a lot of uh, conjecture and, and issues around gender. Mm -hmm. And I've been looking at this issue and I want, to, I want to kind of take away some of the myths. So for me, gender dynamics, the emphasis on, is on the dynamic. Okay. What does so it mean? Every what, 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 is, what does it so, mean when you say dynamic? What does it mean? Well, in every relationship, in this relationship now, you and I talking, there's a dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, we could be very, very serious or we could okay. be very um, silent with each other. We, we could be excited. We could even mm -hmm. be dancing with each other. There's a, there's a dynamic between people mm -hmm. that creates an energy force. Okay. So there's a dynamic in teams. There's a dynamic in business. There's a dynamic in families. Some mm -hmm. families are very happy. Some are, are not so happy. Some are are very extrovert and go out. Yeah. So as I've been studying behavior all my life, mm -hmm. I was looking at what happens between men and women mm -hmm. and, and what happens within the male gender. So what happens between men and men mm -hmm. and what happens between women and women. And mm -hmm. those dynamics are different. Mm -hmm. So the culture of men, the culture of women, irregardless of where you are in the world or whatever generation, mm -hmm. there's a there can be friction and there can be flow. Yeah. So I've been looking at What's the, so the dynamic has an energy to it, mm -hmm. and it's, it, it can take you forward. Yeah. It can take you down. It can take you up, but it's, it's, a, it's a flow. It's a, a force. So gender dynamics is all about how do men and women in today's world, mm -hmm. given all the changes we have around us, yeah. what's going on, and mm -hmm. where does it go wrong, and where does it go right, and how can we understand who's around the table mm -hmm. when we have – a conversation or a communication or, or, or a working situation, family situation or, or an intimate situation. Mm -hmm. And, and, it, and it's about understanding the now mm -hmm. um, because 
as you know, the world has changed rapidly over the last few decades, and I've yeah. been around a few. Mm -hmm. So gender dynamics is not just men and women, but men and men, women and women, mm -hmm. men and women. Okay. Now, when you say men and men and women and women, you're talking about in an, uh, in an organization level, or is it something with the, to do with the well, intimacy level? It, it's it's uh, all levels. Okay. So let's go back to basics. We're born uh, a boy or a girl. Now, we, we have a lot of uh, information about um, different sexual variations as well, but mm. I'm looking at what happens at a very basic biological, physical brain pattern level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if we, when we give birth to babies, you know, we usually say it's a boy or a girl. And I know there's some conjecture about mm -hmm. ones who transition, etc. But there's also another energy, which is masculine and feminine energy. Okay. And that's actually within all of us. Mm -hmm. So in, in you, you're, you're a man, I'm a woman, but you have uh, masculine and feminine energy in you. And I have masculine and feminine energy. Mm -hmm. And now that we're all, everybody is out there on the same playing field more mm -hmm. or less, mm -hmm. because we are all out there communicating uh, digitally, uh, at work, at play. We're all using the same instruments. Yeah. Uh, we, we're in this world of uh, total fluidity. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes the issues that come up and cause us conflict come up because of our gender mix. Okay. And, and the thing is, I, I'm not trying to stereotype people into... Uh, boxes, but I, I've been looking at this from a personal point of view. Mm -hmm. So as a kid, I was a real tomboy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, my sister was much more uh, of a, of the princess. Okay. And as I grew up, I was, uh, you know, I used to dream about going away on tall ships and, um, you know, uh, climbing up trees and, and, and all these things, but I definitely a female and I, I love being a female, mm -hmm. but I, I kind of was trying to work out what, what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I observed that as I grew into my adult life, mm -hmm. that there were various pressures on me to be more feminine female, mm -hmm. but I actually liked being this kind of slightly, not a man, not mm -hmm. male, mm -hmm. but just having that logical uh, headset. Mm -hmm. And, um, and this carried on into my experience in, in the 80s, late 80s, okay. when I actually became an image consultant. Mm -hmm. And I started observing uh, different body types and different people and how there was a, there was a pattern going on there. Okay. And I thought, it's really interesting because it's not just men versus women. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, you know, you can't stripe out just one diversity. It, yeah. It's all layers. Mm -hmm. And that's what I learned being a behavioralist that they, lots of layers but my goal in mm -hmm. helping people understand a new blueprint is we need to communicate have those influencing conversations mm -hmm. but i believe we need to acknowledge that there are lots of differences around the table mm -hmm. and, and i think you know sometimes when we're, we're we're trying to say well we need equality which i agree we need parity etc but if we if we took away all our differences then you know we wouldn't have personalities yeah and so one of my key um, takeouts is that we need to value our differences because they, they make us alive. They make us who we are. Mm -hmm. But we, we can acknowledge mm -hmm. the similarities we have as human beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we are all on the same planet and, and we all breathe the same air. And uh, hopefully our goal is to actually get on and, and share the world. But yeah. how do we understand these, um, understand when it's, there are frictions. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you asked me originally about, you know, uh, am I an influencer? Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to think that I influence in a loving, positive way. Okay. I mean, some people influence in not necessarily positive ways because some people are, are negative. Exactly. So how, how do we embrace everybody's differences? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, my background is that I'm a behavioralist, so I've been studying people's behavior mm -hmm. and there are lots and lots of influences in terms of who we are mm -hmm. uh, there's our nature who what are we born with mm -hmm. so are we born boy or girl or mm -hmm. something in between of course but you know what what happened at birth we, we're given various natural traits mm -hmm. uh, and one of them is our gender yeah and as we grow up then we the nurture side builds in and of course we know there's this there's lots of biases and stereotypes and influences on 
gender issues around the world. Mm -hmm. But uh, as we grow into today's world, mm -hmm. which I, I look at as necessity, so nature, nurture, necessity, mm -hmm. the necessity of life now is that uh, we do want to go out, be successful, mm -hmm. whether it's in our family life or our work life. And women and men mm -hmm. equally want to do this. That's true. So, you know, and we've got a world which is totally digital, totally connected. Mm -hmm. Here we are talking, you know, I'm in Orange County and you're in Kerala. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, every man and woman can do everything mm -hmm. uh, because we live in a world which has given us the tools to do so. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we're all the same. Exactly correct. So, you know, I'm British. Mm -hmm. you're, you're Indian. You're a different age from me. We won't go into what that is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, we've had all these different experiences. I'm a mother and a grandmother as well. Um, I, I'm female with this masculine side. So to me, honoring everybody mm -hmm. so that we can actually influence a very magical conversation mm -hmm. and, and often people can't get to that because they get stuck behind who they think they must be or mm -hmm. or they they don't like other people because you know they're not like me or or they're they put them in boxes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but there are in my in my study in of men and women there there are some very core differences that okay. uh, are apparent in the way we do things and that's mm -hmm. joyful you mm -hmm. know so I can have a baby and you can't, I'm afraid. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> exactly. I mean, sorry, you can, you can father a baby, but you can't actually produce it. Exactly correct. Exactly. Now, why, when you go to an organization, because I know that you, you coach the CEOs and senior management levels. So yes. why, why do they hire you? And what is that sort of uniqueness that you can bring into an organization from the, from the experience that you have? Why should I, as a CEO or, or a founder of an organization, hire you to come up with your uh, expertise? It's, it's really, um, I'm like a sort of a third eye. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an observer who mm -hmm. can put what's going on onto a, a, a blueprint or a map or use tools and tech to each which allow people to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So inevitably, it's because something is not working. Exactly correct. Um, I would say, you know, if your life is absolutely perfect, then, you know, you don't need me. Mm -hmm. But it's when something's going wrong, not necessarily, a, I mean, it could be something very difficult. Mm -hmm. It could be um, a culture where the business has, they've suffered maybe, you know, bullying or sexual harassment. But it could be just that the employees are not, they're not, they're not working in the best way. They, they don't seem to be happy. So mm -hmm. in the UK, with my, my passion for heart, my, my company is called Corporate Heart, and it's around what's the heart of business. Mm -hmm. Now, because business has also changed over the last 30, 40 years, yeah. uh, because of the influence of women, mm -hmm. technology, mm -hmm. and also entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So even within the corporations that the idea of an open-minded, uh, conscious, mindful approach mm -hmm. is important, but remember, characters are different. So if people don't understand, in a way, you know, what the mix of their culture is, mm -hmm. sometimes the leader, male or female, might not understand the, um, the irritants and the, uh, the emotional fallout that's going on, which yeah. impact the productivity and the creativity and the results. That's true. And if they go into a very um, traditional mindset and say, okay, we'll do this um, by putting a new IT system in, or mm. we'll fire the person who we think is wrong, uh, or we'll, you know, we'll downsize that department because it's not working. Mm -hmm. That's really not an effective uh, long-term strategy. Mm -hmm. And the reason that the, the, the gender mix comes into it is that, uh, you know, a large percentage of the workforce is now female, mm -hmm. which it wasn't 30 mm -hmm. years ago for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's changing rapidly. I mean, in, in the UK, I think uh, it's about 45%. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the US, it's about 70% of the workforce are women, but they're not at the top. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the stats for India, but I was recently in Malaysia and again, the workforce is 
the, the percentage of women is creeping up. And also the women, the number of women running their own businesses is going up and up. Exactly. So we have to understand what's happening, especially we say um, a growing company mm-hmm. where uh, if you take someone like Jack Ma, he says that Alibaba yeah. he employs 47% women Mm -hmm. because they're very good at LQ, which is in his terms, love quotient. Okay. But you see, this is where I think uh, love rather than fear Mm -hmm. has to come into business Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. in the old days, you know, like if we go back 50 years when uh, a lot of workplaces were very dominated by men just because women weren't there Mm -hmm. and we didn't have technology. Mm -hmm. It it was a very different uh, boxed, one step at a time, either or environment, which is is essentially what men like to do and do it very well. But now you've got males in there who do things in round ways and tangential ways and one task and and we bring new skills in. Mm -hmm. So the often the CEO has to look at it in a different way. So it's not that he he that he or she is wrong. Mm-hmm. But it may be they're working in an old pattern. Mm-hmm. And what I see happening at the moment is that it's really not working. Mm-hmm. The, the, the traditional, more control and command hierarchical mm-hmm. is not working, whereas collaboration is the name of the game. And Absolutely. some CEOs don't know how to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so when they, they pull me in, and, and I think the reason they like my approach is it's, mm-hmm. Uh, it's not fluffy. It's mm-hmm. it's very um, it's very pragmatic. It's, mm-hmm. it's it's built on a reasonable amount of research and data. Mm-hmm. So I follow what everybody else is doing, mm-hmm. and I put some very um, good observations to them, mm-hmm. and I allow them to grow into their own space. I don't ever I don't ask people what to do. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would, I listen and I observe and I show them up, and they'll say. Uh, if I, if I might ask permission to observe that you just said mm-hmm. this, this, and this, it mm-hmm. kind of places you there, and then this is where the other people are. Mm-hmm. And one of the magics about the blueprint is, um, do you use sat-nav? Do you mm-hmm. use a sat-nav on a GPS um, mm-hmm. Google map? You put in your location, and you put the other location, you find out where to go. This blueprint is about the, the mind field of our, of our existence, and it, it allows you to... Once you know where you are, you can plot a course of communication to another mm-hmm. place on a blueprint, mm-hmm. and it will give you a route, and it will allow you to uh, veer that into other places if you get an obstacle. Mm-hmm. And, and I often have, um, and, and I, I do focus a lot on men, and I'll explain in why in a minute. I often have a lot of men who just di- didn't realize that there was an obstacle there. Mm-hmm. And once they realize there is, they can actually – move around it and do things without each actually having somebody else in the room to mm-hmm. observe the blueprint, but do things differently so they experience them differently. Uh, could, could, you, so could, you, could you give an example so that you can break it down? Okay, so I'll give you an example. Um, you're working with a, a CEO recently, mm-hmm. um, and he was, in, in my terms, he was a very uh, masculine male. Mm-hmm. A very nice guy, you know, and, and all the characters on the blueprint can be positive or negative, but mm-hmm. he, was, he was very enlightened, mm-hmm. uh, but he had um, a member of staff who was not, just not getting on very well with, and mm-hmm. she was much more um, feminine, female, had this very strong, what I call sovereign energy, and her territory was very important. Mm-hmm. So she, she didn't do too well with him coming in and telling her mm-hmm. what to do. And it was simple as that. He thought he was being very gracious, very helpful. And, you know, I go and tell her this and she doesn't, I go and tell her this. And, mm-hmm. and then when I tell her, and I, so my observation to him was that, do you recognize that you're saying tell quite mm-hmm. a lot, which is something that, that potentially in the wrong environment mm-hmm. men can do to women mm-hmm. and they feel, they think he, they're being really good and, they, and she might feel, oh, I don't need that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. By allowing her the space and actually respecting mm-hmm. that space, suddenly she changed from feeling threatened. Mm-hmm. Her territory was then 
a welcome space. And by valuing what she did Mm -hmm. and giving her a bit more time, which Mm -hmm. is sometimes, time is sometimes so precious, um, a male leader Mm -hmm. forgets that that woman needs a little bit more time to go over something Mm -hmm. a few times Mm -hmm. before Mm -hmm. it's okay. So it made them more more box and and, and sudden. So what, what he realized was that by taking the time out, then she actually became more productive and more uh, forward thinking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And not all women are like that. Some women, so the, the more masculine women, masculine women like me are not, and we're not men, so I'm not saying that. We're, but we do things in a slightly more uh, decisive way and don't feel so threatened by that same command because we're slightly tell people as well Mm -hmm. so what i've done on the blueprint but is i've mapped out various behavioral Mm -hmm. stuff that will change now when you've got a team and i I worked with a a lady uh, a female boss Mm -hmm. and she had a team of men Mm -hmm. and she was very in my terms masculine female very and very entrepreneurial and very go-getting and she wanted all these men to be like her Okay. Uh, for a start, they they were men, so they were much more boxed, and stereotypically, uh, it was uh, it was an, um, a telecoms business, so they were quite straightforward, mm-hmm. and they were resistant to her rather imaginative leadership. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was working with them over a period of months, where I work with people individually, and then we bring them together, and then. Mm-hmm. We create that safe space so they become aware of each other mm-hmm. and do it very experientially so that they can go, oh, yeah, you know, I do recognize you're like that. Oh, yes, that's interesting. I hadn't realized that. Mm-hmm. You take more time than me to do that. And then, oh, yes. So rather than just giving people what they have, they're allowed to get into that space. Mm-hmm. But it was a challenge for her because the overlay of being the, the boss mm-hmm. was something the men were in that situation were slightly uncomfortable with as a group. Mm-hmm. Uh, it turned out it turned out well because some of them individually really appreciated going through this transformation. But they needed they need to be they didn't need too much time, but they needed to know they were in charge of their own destiny. Because uh, again, uh, I say with with love, sometimes men's ego gets mm-hmm. in the way. Yeah, uh, and it can do for all of us. Mm-hmm. So the goal is to look at what is the unit doing in that situation? What, what, is, what was that team put there to do? Mm-hmm. And, and the interesting thing, for Rick, is that once we get to be aware and then, in a sense, we put, we put love into the middle, and I mean that in terms of there's only love and fear. Mm-hmm. So rather than leading the team by fear, they were mm-hmm. leading it by uh, liking, loving each other. Then they could forget about all their differences. Absolutely. Because they, they know what they are. Yeah. So to go back to your question, it, they, I'm invited in to travel through a space of time with them. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I love doing is to work on a real life situation mm-hmm. because you get real life outputs. Exactly. And I mean, like with the, uh, the MM, the masculine male boss with the, the FF um, team manager, they're now the best of friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, and they accept their differences. Exactly. And I've had that over and over again. You know, mm-hmm. people actually changing their whole destiny because they, they feel part of something. Mm-hmm. See, I think people like to feel they are part of a conversation, part of a team, part of the, the destiny of their life, be that at work or at home. Mm-hmm. And often they travel into situations where they feel... Uh, over controlled by a person or the system or the, or the especially with very large corporations that there's a challenge there yeah. um and it, this is why i i really love my my countryman richard sir richard branson because mm-hmm. he would appear to really impress on his individual companies that people are important yeah exactly and of course they are that's my my goal is to is to bring people to their best potential, but also help them understand what who's around the table. That's one of my favorite things is, you know, who's around your table? Mm-hmm. Do, do you know where the conversation's going? Mm-hmm. Wow. 
That, does that that's make a, sense? It, it does. It does. It, it does make a lot of sense. I, I know that you have written a book. Could you just take us through the book? What is that all about and where can we get the book? Well, the, the book is, is really about who's in charge. Okay. So you can see from what I said is that, uh, you know, who's in charge? Of course, the secret answer is you are. Exactly. Uh, this first book is the who's in charge, the gender dynamics of love. Mm -hmm. Because although it's a, a book about you as a person, mm -hmm. it's about you in your, yes, in your love, seeking attention and maybe wanting a partner. Mm -hmm. But it's also about where is love in your whole life and how does your gender dynamic impact that? Mm -hmm. So um, it's the first book where I've, I've put on all, if you like, the, all the technical uh, research and understanding that I've discovered mm -hmm. as to how to identify who you are. Mm -hmm. So the book goes into some detail around uh, how you understand your the biology is reasonably straightforward, but your physicality, mm -hmm. which is actually your bone structure and how you stand, how you how your energy is centered, uh, a little bit about your brain, but how it all comes together. So the book has some detail and it goes into characterizations of different characters on the blueprint. Mm -hmm. uh, so although the, the goal of the book is to understand uh, who's in charge of your final destination, which mm -hmm. hopefully is to find a partner of, for life. Mm -hmm. And, and it, could be, um, it could be anybody on, on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. But is it, is it within you to love the person uh, as opposed to many people go and look for their special love and believe that that person will change their life. Yeah. I believe it comes from you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the answer to who's in charge is you. Absolutely. But what's interesting, Farouk, is that when I've said to people, you know, mm -hmm. oh, the book's called Who's in Charge? They go, oh, I must read that. Mm -hmm. And I always think they're kind of thinking somehow it's going to give them the answer to what controls are external to them mm -hmm. but it, it is designed as a self-help um okay. self-help self-development book that helps you to be okay in the whole of your life because mm -hmm. i i don't know whether you believe this or not but there is only love and fear mm -hmm. and i think that we should run the world with love rather than fear absolutely i do i do agree with you in that case um, um, Pauline, before we end up, what are the three points that you would like to share with the audience uh, so that can help them? I think the first point is to stop making assumptions mm -hmm. about who you are and whether somebody else is controlling you. Okay. You know, that famous statement, we can't change anybody else's behavior. We can only influence them. Exactly. Should we want to, and that has to come from you. That's so true. stop making assumptions and and take a really decent, okay look at yourself. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, it's quite easy to diagnose who you are. You know, mm -hmm. personality type, physicality, but also to look at why you are mm -hmm. where you are in your life and and what choices you want to make. So the second thing is, be okay with the choice that you make at the time you make it, mm -hmm. because. Uh, if things around you don't go so well and you feel it, it's not working, then maybe the choice was not right yeah. and therefore make another choice. Okay. But if you do make it, own it and, yeah. and know that if it feels good, then it probably is the right choice. Yeah. And, and the third one, which is, I think, very important, is set the intention to have love in your life. And yeah. I'm not talking necessarily about intimacy, but about... Yeah. Being a loving person in your whole persona, mm -hmm. in the words you use, mm -hmm. the 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 catchphrases you use, the the, the techniques, you, everything is to be focused on something loving and positive. Mm -hmm. There's a lovely quote I came across once. We said, "It isn't about what you do; it's about the love you put into the doing." Absolutely, absolutely. And that would be interesting. So don't make assumptions. Um, be clear and own your choices. And set intentions every day because, to be honest, you can never lie about your intentions. That's true. You know, intentions come from your heart. Exactly. And go big, you know, take a, a large intention. And my intention is to bring harmony to the world and 
I think that's quite a big intention. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe that and I will seek to employ that every day in what I do. Wow. One last question is, Pauline, you are a single person. Now, do you have an organization or do you have uh, uh, leaders below you who can cascade what you're speaking right now? I'm in, the, I'm in the, the, the position of developing that because I've moved continents recently. I was in Malaysia for four years and now come to America. I have a network of associates and consultants and I'm part of various networks. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting because I find a lot of people want to work like that. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they, they want to, I was talking to somebody today, it's about let's be in collaboration on this project, be in collaboration on that. So I'm now... Um, in a way, got many people who can bring this to life. Mm -hmm. And the uh, goal with my book is to develop uh, the programs even more. I've been doing them for years, but to actually eventually, uh, if you like, package them and allow other trainers and coaches to use that. Yeah. So that's ongoing part of my journey to this continent. Mm -hmm. And I will be focused on the US, the UK and Asia Pacific because I have networks in all those areas and hopefully in India and the rest of the world as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much, Pauline. Ladies and gentlemen, Pauline. <laughs>